Nancy? Oh, I say, that's terrible. Who stuck this on for you? You did. Oh, did. Well, how do you expect the glue to stick on? You've been polishing it on top. Never mind that. Do something quickly or I'll miss my cue. I use some of my special glue. This has got the white of an egg in it. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait a minute. Okay. I'm in no hurry. I just want to know if I'm all right. I'll say you are. What can I do for you? Well, I don't think there's much I need, really. <laughs> say that again. <laughs> Here, what about me? Here. Would you mind buttering it yourself? You're Sabrina, aren't you? Why, how did you guess? Oh, I'd know you anywhere. You've got something that the others haven't got. <laughs> <laughs> Thank what you. shall I do with uh, this? You can stick it. No, I better stick it. Ooh. Take it easy. Now, now, now. I know what I'm doing. Now then. Now press it down. That's right. Hard. That's it. Enjoy yourself. Now, what would you like? Oh, well, I'd like you to do something with my lips. What do you suggest? Oh, well, just a little freshening up. No, it doesn't matter. I've got a touch of the Joe Blakes. I'll just take one of my tablets. Oh, well, it's all right, then. I'll finish it off myself on the set. Oh, allow me. Here, what do you think you're doing? Oh, sorry. I'll unveil you now. There. It's a bit off centre. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Charlie? Now, this is going to hurt a little. Coward. You know, I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I passed Sabrina's house the other day. You can tell her house got big bow windows. A and, uh, <laughs> got a notice on the gate. No hawkers, no circulars, no carpenters. A and... <laughs> what, what do you think of these film stars with the sleeping tablets? They're mad. Some of them should go and see their own films. I hope you put a ticket, sir. Oh, yes, yes, I've got a vote, sir. I'm an actor, sir. Do you want the stuff in a taxi waiting outside of a private car? I beg, I beg your pardon? I said it was a taxi which is a bit slow waiting for him, or a private car, because the one that's going for the other is not necessary for say. Yes, that's what I thought you said. Because there's one outside, sir. One what? A taxi, sir. Oh, taxi, yes, indeed. I like a taxi. Thanks very much. When it's the way loading of the lucky, which on the roof of the rack is might not have cost, Mark, you, or stuff in the inside, it doesn't get elbow room. What do you think? I should have it inside, sir. Yes, that's what I thought. Have what inside? The luggage. Oh, the luggage, yes. Uh, Frankie Howard was, the, was in fact the, was Dick Whittington. I wasn't in his. But on the opening night, I mean, it happened that they couldn't make the, the set jammed. And Frank went out there and he said, you know, they pushed him out and said, Frank, get out and do a few minutes. And he went out and said, yes, well, um, you know, this lot, you know, it's all the madam, it's all the madam, you know, they, they can't change the set. Don't, don't look, don't look, it's embarrassing. Anyway, because somebody's got to do a few minutes, you know. So you know who, don't you? Yes, Muggins, Mug ever so Gins, yes. And he did this impromptu bit, which was hysterical, and they kept it in, even though the following night they were able to do the change, but the, the spot was wonderful. So this is where you do it all? Do what all? I thought this was always where the captain was. Ah, uh, yes, but he, I'm afraid he's rather busy at the moment. Oh, so he left it all in your capable hands. Now, now, naughty, naughty. What would your husband say? When I find my husband, he won't get much chance to say anything. I bet he won't. Look, you must go back on the deck. Now, there's a good night. Oh, madam, Mr. Sybil, I gave Sybil the best 30, 20 years of my yes. life, and what did he do? Scarpered. He left a note on the piano, oh. seeking a new life. Mm. I think it was life. His writing was terrible. Yes, well, you see, a man never appreciates what he's got until he's got away and seen what he's had, or vice versa. Then I traced him to Al Jarocco. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sidney Galloway's got a shot coming to him. Especially he's a bad writer. I was working once at the Glasgow Empire with Frankie Howard. And Frankie was a very, very scared comic, you know, on, on, on things like, like Glasgow. If he didn't get wrapped to tension, uh, he went to pieces. And when he was scoring, when he, was, when he had the audience with him, even in the early days, 
the walls used to go like that, you know, because he was such a riot. He was, he was, he was so funny. On the other hand, if he didn't, there was complete silence. You know what he was getting at? They would listen to this fellow say, "Oh no, 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 and they never heard anybody do this on the stage because people were usually word perfect. But he was making, he was making an act of it. You know, no, and he's doing all this all the time, you see. And suddenly, I was watching him from the wings on this particular day, and there was a shot like a rifle. I, I thought somebody had fired a gun. And you know what, somebody, because they didn't like him, they didn't, or didn't get what he was after, they'd thrown a ship's rivet from the gallery onto the stage, and as it hit the stage, it went, boom! And uh, uh, none of us knew what it was until the interval, and then uh, a stage manager, a man named Bill Lyonshaw, who was a touring manager, he came in and found it in the curtains. There was this, if it had hit Frank, it would have killed him. <laughs> oh, God, how desperate can a comedian be? <laughs>